Welcome to Code Academy's Intro to Coding course. This course will teach us basically how to animate our name in JavaScript. It's really a beginner course, so there's a perfect place to start if you're brand new to coding. Let us begin. Start. So it says, Welcome to Code Academy. Are you ready to start coding? Code Academy is all about learning by doing and by coding. In this lesson, we'll take you through the basics of how to use Code Academy and show you some of the power of learning to code. The section below this text contains instructions about what to do and how to proceed to the next exercise. So here are our instructions. They say the center panel contains a code file which is running in the browser panel on the right. Move your mouse cursor over the letters in the browser panel to animate them. So this index.js is actually a file and this is the code within there. So when we run this code, it will run on the browser panel on our right here. So this is being caused by this file here. So let us click next. Write some code. The code editor in the panel is written in a programming language known as JavaScript. But that detail isn't too important right now. It's time to start writing your own code. When you run your code in this exercise, we'll run some tests to make sure that you've added or changed the code correctly. If something's not right, you'll see an error message at the bottom of the code editor. If everything is good, you'll be able to move on. So the instructions, change the text between the single quotation marks to your name and click the run button. So here are the single quotation marks. It says enter your name here. So we will put Jose Moreno, which is my name. You could put your own, but let us run this. It did change, enter your name to Jose Moreno. And now we have that cool animation effect on our name. Let us hit next. So changing variables. Now you'll use a variable to quickly change your program. Variables are used to store some kind of data in a program that can be referenced elsewhere, often more than once. Variables look different in different programming languages. In the code editor, there's a line that looks like this. Message is assigned this variable, change the message. So this line creates a message variable and stores the change the message text in it. Later in the program, message is used to reference that text inside draw name meaning that the message text appears on the screen so if we actually look here there's this message which is assigned the string or series of characters change the message here we call message variable with draw name function of course if this sounds crazy to you just understand change the message is thrown inside of draw name and that's why it says later in the program, message is used to reference that text inside of draw name, meaning that the message text appears on the screen. Instructions. Change the text stored in the single quotes stored in the message variable from change the message to a new message. So we want to change our variable to have cooler message. So when I run this, message will now contain cooler message and therefore, when we call the draw name function, it will have cooler message. Let us run that. And we do see cooler message. We did pass, so let us continue. So changing colors. Okay, time to make this animation more interesting. In the code editor, draw name now has two items between the parentheses message and red. The text in the browser panel has also turned red. Draw name is a set of repeatable code that we've defined elsewhere called a function. We call the function or ask the program to run that code and pass in different values to see different responses. So important thing here, when you hear someone say call the function, it basically means ask the program to run that function or that code within the function. And we pass in different values to see different responses. So you already did this when you change the value of the variables that you use to call draw name. When you call draw name or invoke that function with two different values, you can set the message and display the color. In addition to red, we've defined variables that represent some other colors for you to use. So change the second variable from red to one of the other variable color names defined in the code editor. Here we have red and it's an array which we still haven't learned about but arrays allow us to have lists of values here our values are numbers 
So we have a list of three numbers stored in red, which I would probably think is their RGB, red, green, blue values. But again, we'll learn about that stuff in other lessons. The important thing here is that they want us to change the second variable from red to one of the other variable colors named defined in the code editor. So here, draw name has two parameters. The first one is message, the second one is red. Instead of red, we want to pass in another one. Purple is way better of a color. So now this should change from red to purple once we run it. And it did change to purple. Let us continue next. So multiple colors. The text is now displayed in multiple colors. There is a new variable named letter colors with a list of color variables inside brackets separated by commas. So here we have this variable letter colors. It's assigned red, orange, green, blue, purple, an array again, a list of variables which contain, so it's actually arrays within arrays, which is funny. Uh, again, this might seem confusing, but you'll learn more as you continue your coding journey. But right now, we have this variable, letter colors, which contains red, orange, green, blue, and purple. The displayed text in the browser panel will cycle through the values in letter colors in order when draw name is called with letter colors. Learning a code is all about experimentation, trying out new code and observing the results. As you experiment, you may want to reset your code to the starting state. This can be done with the reset button at the bottom of your code editor, which is this thing, I believe. So instructions, each color is represented by three numbers between brackets. Try changing numbers, running your code, and observing the result. You can always reset your code if you don't like the result. So each color is represented by three numbers between brackets. So each color here is represented by three numbers, one, two, three. So try changing the numbers and running the code to observe it change. So what if we make this 63, leave that 100, and make this 20, make this one 30, make this one 20. Now I'm just putting random stuff. So we just change it up a bit, okay. Let us run that now. And we do see it change. It looks like the U disappeared as well as O for some weird reason, but that's not important. We did pass it, so let us continue going next. The important thing from this one is just we change these numbers and later on when we call letter colors right here on line 13, when we call letter colors, which is in line 9, red, orange, green, blue, purple, which are now changed because we changed them, it essentially changes the result of calling draw name. So let us go next. So change physics. Part of the power of coding is that small changes can create big impacts. Now that you've experimented with changing the color and text, it's time to experiment with the animation itself. Instructions, three variables let you experiment with the animation physics. Mouse response threshold, friction, and rotation force. Mouse response threshold affects how close the mouse pointer needs to be to affect the dots that make up the letters. The larger the number, the more powerful the effect of the mouse interaction. Experiment with changing the mouse response threshold to different numbers and running your code. So mouse response threshold is at 50. What if we put 2? So I'm going to try Try experimenting. Oh, that was the first one. So I'm going to run this and now let's try it. So it seems not even to be doing anything. Let me try changing this to 25. So that one's a little better. We got this error because it's expecting us to try the second instructions, but I'm still messing with this. Let's try 100. See if it goes faster. Oh, yeah. That's pretty darn cool. So that was messing with the mouse response threshold. Next, they want us to try experimenting with friction value. You'll probably want to keep friction between zero and one. So let's try doing zero five. Let's run that. We did pass. Let's see what this does. Friction. Oh, wow. So that's like how fast the little things go. Who knows? But that's another variable, has its own value. When we pass that in there, it does make everything a lot slower. So let's make this one run. 
Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Okay, finally try experimenting with the rotation force. The variable represents how much each animated dot will try to rotate when in interacting with the mouse. Try to keep the value small, maybe around 0 0.01. So, rotation force 0 0.02. We'll run that. We did pass. And there's that. That's pretty crazy. Next, lesson seven. This is pretty much it. Congratulations. You are ready to take on your next Code Academy lesson. That was Intro to Coding on Code Academy. If you guys found that helpful, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Also, I have wewillcode.com, which organizes these courses for you. And you guys can basically learn free Code Camp and Code Academy courses from the beginning, and they're super helpful. Check those out if you guys have time. And it was great having you guys here. I'll see you guys on the next video.